Hey guys, welcome to our channel. In this video, I would like to introduce you to Clavio flows and campaigns. What's the difference behind it? How we approach both for our all of our clients, and you'll learn about strategies, frameworks, and all the technical aspects of building out your email automations, also called flows. Some people call them journeys, but in general, those are the things that make your email marketing journey super successful. We've seen brands, we see brands generating 20% just from those email automations, another 20% from campaigns. So I hope you'll find this video valuable. If you have any questions, don't forget to drop a comment and I'll answer them as soon as possible. Enjoy. First of all, let's start with the difference between a flow and a campaign or newsletter or EDM. If you're in Australia, you might call it EDM. So campaign newsletter, this is something you send out once. You have Friday campaigns, you send it out, it's done, right? Someone received it, some people opened, some people didn't. Now, a, a flow a flow is a little bit different because it's automated. You, let's say you have one campaign that is really going great, you have an, an amazing offer, and you want to use that as a welcome flow because it's working so well and when you send it one time, this offer that's special, you want to use it for everyone who will enter your subscription or subscribe to your list, will enter your store and leave their email address. You might as well do that. And if you set it up, which we are going to cover every, the most powerful flows we're going to cover, I think it's gonna end up being like 10 flows at the minimum. So you don't need anything else until you start scaling to like half a million a month. Yes, flow is an automation. So that email will be sent out. The same exact email will be sent out to that person. You can have variables such as your first name or uh, a product block that is dynamic. Dynamic means every, it's different for everyone. So there are some ways to really make it look like it's new and it's sent just to you. Uh, but after all, the goal here is to automate something that is working and helps you recover abandoned carts with its a pre-purchase flow, if it's a post-purchase flows, we're creating an, a better customer experience and we're helping them make more educated decision, choose products they need, avoid products they don't need, customize products. If you have products that can be customized or if they can be dedicated to them, let's say they have certain shape of face, you can have a quiz and if they choose the answer all the questions you will give them the product they need or it's a good fit for them if it's something health related if they tell you that they have problems with x you can have, provide them solution for x and not y z right so you can be very specific with the flows but they are usually triggered by something so when someone is active on site they would receive or 50 percent of people it's a random sample would receive an email 30 minutes later, 50%, four hours later, would receive a certain email. And note, uh, side note, it says active on site and here abandoned cart only because I don't have any Shopify store connected to this demo account. Um, and it's something that uh, we just use for reference and copy designs and um, co copy frameworks, not something that we finish uh, for, a pro for any of the clients. That's why you see all the zeros here, just FYI. Um, on the, so basically, actually this, this is pretty adv advanced setup already because we have a conditional split, which conditional split can be random sample of 50-50 if you wanna test, if 30 minutes works better than four hours, people might mark this one as this one as spam because it's too early, but they will like this one or this one will be opened much more often than this one, then you can decide that four hours will be the way to go. Another very, very important note, when you are going to delete conditional split, everything that happens after that, this, this particular flow will be deleted. Trust me, you don't wanna be in this position. I've done it, my wife has done it. You will go around the day and curse all the time and be angry at everything, ruin your relationships with your dogs, pets, friends, and everyone else. If you have everything built out and it's gone, you didn't save it, it might happen that it is gone and it's not something you can recover. So how you can overcome it, wait, basically if you decide four hours is better, then move the four hour here and put it right there. One more time, there you go. And then move everything that is below that you wanna keep above this. So when nothing is down below, you can then remove this um, 
this conditional split. And uh, another way to spl split testing is, um, as you can see, is you can do it based on location or simply when someone, let's say, um, was act active on site or I don't have here abandoned car, but active on site and you can choose at least one, zero times once, or you can even add a product. So if you would have a product, you can choose, I don't have anything here, but you could choose any product. So if they abandon certain products, they would receive uh, 50% and the rest of will receive something else, right? Um, so yeah, we have that. You have time delays. The, when it comes to delays, you can choose days or you can do certain time zone. You can do also certain day of the week and certain time. So if you have campaigns that are going out on Tuesday and Thursday, you might as well set up flows that only go out around this time if this is a specific flow that you don't want them to receive. For example, welcome flow is a good example for it. So I use the word example as well. I hope I don't confuse you. If I do, comment and let me improve that. Let's say you have a welcome flow that go, uh, let's say you have a campaign calendar that sends out every Tuesday and Thursday. You have something in something educational, you send it out and everyone who subscribes will also receive this newsletter because they subscribe. So you might want to set up Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays for your welcome flow. So they will receive one email a day in the beginning stage. If you think it's too much, remove one day. If you think it's fine, go ahead and do it. I'm not going to be talking, be talking about specifics for each flow. I just want you to understand that there is ways to test and you can have uh, time delays obviously between the emails. So first email is being sent out 30 minutes later. Then once they receive this, one day later they'll receive another email. And there's also filters, trigger filters. You can add when something, basically the trigger when they were active on site on let's say certain uh, URL. So send certain landing page only if there were on this landing page and left without adding to cart or doing any other action, you can choose that. And flow filters. So if basically they were active on site, but they have done something else. So let's say they place order. Probably I won't be able to. Oh, I actually have that. Cool. So place order at least once since starting the flow. If I save that, that means that someone who placed an order at least once since starting that flow will not get this particular email. Why? Obviously, if they added to cart, we show them products that they, they were, they, they've seen um, when they added to cart and we don't want them to, uh, we don't want to send consecutive emails like, Hey, you forgot something in cart when they bought. So this is pretty much flow filters and we'll go about every specific flow and flow filters in more depth after that. Uh, another thing is that I wanted to share with you when it comes to template or framework, you usually have in the flows, very similar framework. You want to make sure that it's congruent throughout all of your flows. So company logo, a hero image, don't make it too big, make it as small as possible, unless it's really needed. So for all abandoned card flows, um, and all pre purchase flows, most likely you will have something smaller because they want to see the product they left in cart first. This is like psychology behind it where we forget things, we're scatterbrains. And if you add a product to the cart and you forget about this, you need to see that product first before you see anything else. That just makes more sense on a psychological level. And believe me, that's why abandoned cart works so well because people just forget or some people want this discount, but a lot of them forget. Need more time to decide. And again, I, actually, I wanted to add something to it. So if, if they want a discount, right? A lot of people, there's some people that want this discount, but a lot of people, they just are, if they need the product, if you are doing your good job with the copy and conversion on your website, then if, if they need something now, they will not wait three, four days to get a discount unless it's something they don't need. And that means that the copy or the conversion is not doing good enough job or maybe the ad on top, top of the funnel. So there's some copy. Um, this is something very specific, uh, very um, general. Um, but yes, I'll give you some examples. And when it comes to copy, I will I would like to give you frameworks. I don't want to do any copy and paste things. Uh, I know they're popular. 
if if you really want it, I can. Or you can just copy whatever you find. But trust me, you need to find your brand's voice. And this is so important. So most of the time, um, the copy needs to be so specific to how you would sound. And the reason, the way I approach assembling copy for all of our clients, for myself, for our company, for everything we do, is I put myself in the shoes of the customer. So what is happening? Let's say this is abandoned cart. So imagine someone walks into your physical store and they were looking around. Maybe you approach them, maybe not. Then they add something to the cart and then something happened and they just left the cart and ran out. You want to stop them be like, Hey, if it's female, a lot of female brands say babes or baby or girl. If you know that 99% of your audience is female, you do it. If it's something for men, my hey friend or hey buddy, you might be calling them out by name. You might have on your list a name or you can set up a default. So it's either the name or hey buddy. And then what would you say? Is that something direct? Like, hey, I see you have a product in the cart. What happened? Is there something I can help you with? Or, hey, I was I see you were looking at this particular product. Is there, you didn't like it or what happened, right? Assuming that there's no urgency. They just left it and walked out low key. Assuming there's no urgency that they run because of something. Then what would you say? How would you approach them? The same goes when they welcome, when you welcome them, when they came for the first time, where they came for the second time. How would you say, mention someone? You probably know them by name now. I probably would ask for their name when they came first time to, to, to purchase first time. You want to make them feel like at home. Maybe you will offer them something. Might be coffee. So there's your discount code. If you would have a disc, coffee, some people, we had clients that were offering, they had physical stores that were offering glass of wine. They had high ticket product, luxury fashion stuff. So every order was like $500 or $1,000 every time someone walked in and bought and they were offering wine for their clients. If they didn't want to wine, then coffee with cake or whatever that was. So there was a discount code. Really, you're trying to make the customer experience much better. So back to the framework. Again, I'll actually start from zero. So you have a company logo, hero image, copy that needs to be direct, product dynamic product blocks. Again, the product they left in a card, it's not in every flow, but in most of the flows pre-purchase, you'll see some sort of product dynamic product block. You can show trending products. You can show testimonials, company reviews, and company benefits. What is that you offer? Free shipping, 90 day money back guarantee, free trial, free in house, indoor, um, I'm sorry, virtual shopping. So when you have a physical store, you want to invite them. Gucci, Gucci does that, uh, where they have um, physical stores, and people, when they call in, they can schedule a virtual tour and see things how they feel and then talk to someone you want to show your testimonials and in the footer i've seen many times people place their mission statement why would you place a mission statement in the footer that no one reads if if you, this is your mission statement that needs to be somewhere either here or about here people need to see it and keep it throughout your flows it's not enough when you show it once so that's the framework we use for all of the flows you can pretty much use it for literally every flow and stick to it like once you have it. Um, and again, the same goes for subject lines. Naming conventions are um, very simple and I'll, I might actually throw in another video talking about it, but um, the name of the flow, if this is like an A-B test, then you can name the test. If it's someone, create, if you create it for someone, then I would say definitely your agency name, your business name, your freelancer name, initial something something simple. So I'll see it email number one, version A, email number one, version B. Um, then you have email number two, three or four. The reason why we name them that way is because of the um, reports. Once we get to the report section, I'll show you some of the reports. You want to make sure that the reports are easy to read so you can find identify things as soon as possible. Um, smart sending. That basically means you are sending within usually 16 hour window. You don't send a, a, an email within 16 hour window. And that's uh, sometimes it makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. Uh, you, you, I'll let you decide. I will definitely see first how your unsubscribe rate goes, how your spam rate goes. If it's high, turn it on by all means. 
become your client. So if you set up all the flows, they're live, go to your store, play with it, set up an email, that a dummy email, and get those emails and see how it feels. We also map out the customer journey that is post-purchase, um, and that the reason why we do that, we wanna make sure that we don't leave a customer, let's say, just for campaigns. If, if, if there's a, a gap when they place an order and when their win-back flow hits, win-back is basically when someone placed an order and then three months later they still didn't buy again, and you send them a win back flow. That's why win back, you're trying to win the customer again to buy. If there's a gap in, if we identify and map out the whole customer journey and there's a big gap there, well, you need to add more flows and you'll close this gap because the campaigns are good. They're generating 20 to 30, sometimes 20 to 40% of total revenue, but your flows should also be close to 15, 20%. And not only that, revenue is important and obviously adds profitability but it helps you get referrals helps you get um improve the customer journey get higher increase your average order value increase your lifetime value throughout the year so annual lifetime value if you have that metric it's very important to see how much people spend on average throughout 12 months and flows can absolutely help you double that or triple that or quadruple that we've seen that over and over again where we had lifetime value of $75, average order value of $40. And if you place the flows right, your average order value becomes your lifetime value, 75 plus, and then your lifetime value becomes four or five X of that. It's absolutely possible. Why? Because we map out the journey for 12 months and we wanna make sure we communicate with our clients the right way. UTM tracking, that's for um, Google Analytics and attribution. So basically it would create a separate URL for all the emails so you can easily track, hey, this was attributed to the email. I always have that on, why not? Um, most of the time you won't read the re report to the email because that would be insane. You might have hundreds of emails and uh, that might be too much, but simply to keep make sure that all tracking happens, have that on and then additional filters. Most of the time you don't need that. Um, it's basically if you would have an additional flow, for example, here, so, or let's say if in the first email, the filter can be, Hey, maybe they've spent, they received this email only if they spent $50 or the product they have in cart is worth $50. So that might be additional filter. If it's not $50, they received the email number two. And that simply might be the offer. If they have an, an item that is 50 worth $50, um, you might give them a stronger offer. So yeah, you can be very specific. Um, after all, I hope this video made sen makes sense for you and it gives you a good picture of how to structure flow, what you will get from us, a lot of frameworks, how to do it, we'll walk you through it, but I don't want you to copy and paste all the stuff that you see because this is not gonna work. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much.